All right, what I'm going to talk about now is how to start your I part, 00221111, and we're going to start with the new part. Standard IPT, this is going to be in inches. And the first thing that we're going to start off with is the drawing for the little keeper pin. It's on page 7, valve spring keeper pin. So what I see is that it has a diameter and a length, and it's made of drill rod. But that's the only thing I see so far. So I'm going to make a diameter here. Nothing is projected. So what do I want to do? Project geometry so it's on the origin. Project geometry. Go ahead and project. We're sketching always on the XY plane, so project the other two that would be intersecting that. And I'm going to go ahead and grab the center point. In our application options, we can set that center point to always be automatically projected, but it wasn't set. So I'm going to have a circle. The diameter is 0.063. Right. And if you see that dimension going all the way across, that's the diameter. If you see it only coming halfway out, you can specify radii. I think about it this way. If I make two clicks, a click here and a click here, and I start to put a dimension on. Let's say I didn't draw it to size. If I put a dimension in and I select it, if I want a radial dimension, I can right-click right now and change the dimension type to a radius or a diameter. So watch that one. All right. So that's 63 thousandths. I'm going to go to my little home button here, and I'm going to go ahead and hit E for extrude. And I like to push things away from me. I don't know why, but now in your eye part, you want to start modeling with, with some part being the flange head and some part being the other end. And that needs to be the same consistent every time because we're starting a sketch from one side every time. All right, and we said that the length, is what? 0.24. Okay. So, ooh, wow. So let me show you that you can edit the whole part instead of having to go in the sketch or edit the feature. And notice that it, it didn't do anything. So anytime you just show dimensions and edit the dimension, that's when you can get the feature dimensions and the sketch dimensions at the same time. Just hit the regenerate button right there. All right, so if I double click my middle mouse button, it zooms to fit. Now I'm going to apply my material. And this is, what do we say, drill rod? What's that? I need to find out something appropriate for drill rod. There is a, a steel that's high strength, low alloy. High strength, low alloy. The, high, the less alloy in steel, the more pure it is and a lot more strong. Okay, and alloy is just a combination of the two. So I've got those, and I've got this in this color right here. If I want to just change the color, I can do that. So right now, what do I have? If I go to manage, I can look at my parameters. What is this? What is it on our sheet? It's our diameter. What is 0.24? Length. And then 0 degrees because it's not angled anywhere. So now I've got two parameters. All right, so let's go back to the extrusion, edit the extrusion. Now, if I wanted to look at this, I could say 0 0.063 equals diameter. 
Well, what happened there? Yes. Okay. So if I go in here and I go to Dimension Properties, there's the name of the dimension. Okay, and I'm going to finish that. If I edit this extrusion, it's not showing me what my parameter is, is it? List parameters. Okay, so it's, it's trying to put the parameter in here from my parameters. So let me show you the better way to do this. If we go back, instead of putting it all in manage and going to parameters and changing these, I've got to go back some more. Instead of doing this, do you notice that I'm having to go and do it again? I've got this dimension. It's picking the wrong thing. So you see the model value is set. Where are the dimension properties? I'm going to go to the first of this text, and I'm going to put DIA equals. Now, if you have more than one word, you have to have an underscore. All right, so I'll put that in there. And this dimension, if I double-click on that, you can go to the Home button and say Length equals. I can also do it in the extrusion. But if I just show the dimension, I can go in here and put my parameters all in my dimensions already at one time. Okay. So, update, parameters, it did it for me. Okay. All right. So, we've got our material applied. So, let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to save this part. After every configuration, this is going to be called, uh, what are we going to call this? We're going to put our, our, file, our part numbers in the title block. In, I mean, in the spreadsheet. Okay? That's going to put our part numbers in here. We'll just call this I part. Okay? And we'll call the other one uh, discs. And then we'll call the other one needles. And we'll call the other one knobs. And the other one's, you know, bushing and post or something like that. Now that I've saved that, I'm going to create an I part from it right here. So it's under manage. Right. So I've got a member name right here. In the member name, I'm going to put in. Valve spring keeper pin. And you can copy it and paste it from your spreadsheet. Make sure you capitalize everything. The part number. Just say okay to these things. Now there are options down here. And I'm going to start this part number system. So I'm going to set it to a value, the part number. And the part number is going to take the part name. But we're going to set this to 0020 21111. All right, that's the part number. However, our separator for our dash numbers is going to be a dash. And see how it just has two spaces right here to the right? We're going to start out with an initial value of 1, dash 001. And it's going to be three places to the right. You see how it changed that down there? So this is how it's going to start setting up your part numbers. All right, we're, for the member name, we're going to set to the member part name and say OK. Yes, we want to apply it to all members. So here's the generic name because when you open this, this file, you don't want to have to remember all these part numbers. Does that make sense? Okay, so I have a diameter and a length. What else do I have that I need to add for this? 
Are all these parts made of the same material? Okay. So let's go to properties of this part. Physical. And we're going to add high strength steel here. Okay. So I've got my table. I'm starting with just one part in there. But you see how we're going to get to see what the actual name of the part is? But the part number will come up. Okay. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to edit that and we're going to add our next part. Do we have to, I'm going to name this expression cylinder. And since that's going to be present in all configurations, we don't have to turn that on and off. All right, so let's go to the table. And I'm going to make my second one. So I'm going to right click in here and insert a row. Rocker arm roller pin, that's automatically making that a dash 2. What's the diameter? And the length? Is this equation? So I'm going to take this equation from my spreadsheet. Didn't come in, did it? So 0 0.025 plus... 0.214 plus 18 thousandths plus 30 thousandths. So there's an equation right there. Does it like that? It verified out. What is the material? Stainless steel. Okay, so we have that thing, and we've got some other features on it, right? I'm going to start with that. Cannot calculate the parameter. Put an equal at the beginning. Doesn't like that either, does it? Yeah, we can. So how do you calculate a column? Equal at the first. What's that? So you put an equal sign right here. So right here, I'm going to do the same thing. Jose, you were supposed to know this. I'm just kidding. I love to talk about that. That's funny. So I'm going to do this to all of these. Equal. I like having it in here, though, so that I can see how I got to it. Does that make sense? What is that doing? Is this 0 0.1 plus 0.35? I think it is. Why is it doing an F9 on me? Okay, right here. Oh, I see. Okay, so we got those done. Let's come over here and put this number in here then. So for the rocker arm roller pin, it is 287. Okay, now, if I want to change this, how am I going to change it? I'm going to have to leave it just like that for a minute. So let's go to the rocker arm roller pin. See that? So it changed. So now I've got to model the flange and the neck ring and the chamfer at the end and get my dimensions in there. So I'm going to start right here. Yes. So if we were to leave those 
the the yeah when you put a formula in something instead of just calculating it it shows you how you got there so after you open it up after a few years you're like i don't know where this dimension came from i don't see why so sometimes it helps me okay so i'm going to create this sketch i've just got a concentric circle on this face the diameter is i'm going to put flange dot underscore di equal and what is that okay and now that parameters in there I'm going to extrude it now we said that we were using the overall length so I'm going to extrude these the other way because the overall length that we were using included the flange so the thickness of the flange so flange thickness equal 0.025 yes you have to have an underscore between your words so in parameters only okay good all right so now we're gonna have this cut so how are we gonna make that revolve cut <laughs> dang it okay so let's start the sketch all right, where is the, the cut dimension to? It's dimension to what? The underside of the flange, right? So I'm going to project the geometry of the underside of the flange. And I'm going to go to Slice Graphics. You guys remember that? Where you can cut into it and see. Look at my right-hand view. And I'm going to just draw a little rectangle. I'm just a little box, and it'll snap to the edge. And there. Now, if we need something that, is it a diametric dimension for that cut? Okay, so we're seeing that this is a diameter of 0.073 here. So what do I need whenever I'm going to revolve anything? An axis. So I'm going to project the geometry of this plane. And what's cool about that is you don't have to draw another center line. You can select it and change it to a center line. And that allows us what? We get a dimension across here. When I click here and I click the this, it gives me the diameter dimension. Only if I have a center line style. Okay, so that's so 73. And I'm going to go to home, and what is, what is that? We didn't have any kind of parameter on that, did we? We just see that you have a neck or not. So that's 0 0.073. And then it's dimension from here to here. Thank you. And did we come down? We came down. So I'm going to drag this one down so that it comes down from there. This dimension, thank you. Oh, come on. I'm going to mention just this. Okay. So now when I hit R for revolve, it's got that thing. It wants the profile. It's doing an extrude. I hit the wrong thing. R. It's going to be a cut. It's going to be full, and it already picked up my axis. I'm going to say OK. And now I have a chamfer. 3D model. Chamfer. This edge. And what is the size? We were putting 15 thousandths on it. So you see how it gives you a caution sign because it's too large? It would cut through itself. So we did that just because it was about half that thickness left over. Okay. So I got that one. So I got this one. Let's name some of these features. I've got flange. I've got neck. And I've got chamfer. So what did we name these things? We named it something different. Chamfer size, 
there was a end chamfer and a start chamfer, right? So this was the end chamfer, wasn't it? And this is a start. Since all of our protrusions start and go this way, I'm going to name it like this. So this is in chamfer. Now, are we going to have different chamfer sizes? We've got one already on the tappet bushing. So let's go into that chamfer right there. And I'm going to put this. Now, two things, see how I didn't put an underscore? Two different parameters cannot have the same name. Okay? No parameters should have the same name. Okay. So we got that one, but now we're going to change its material. So I'm going to save this, and we're changing this to what? Stainless steel. Three oh four, it's a pretty common stainless steel. And then I'm gonna save it. Look, it says, hey, we're changing this. Do you want to do it? Stop asking me that. Let's go into the table. And look how it changed it for me. When you first put this in, you're gonna to have to bring in the material, just make it whatever the first one is. And then through each one, you may want to do this at the very end. Just go through each configuration and change the material. Okay? Don't forget. All right, the next one. Dash three. Oh, good. Yeah, we got to add all our things, right? So let's go to our table. We're going to look over here. We've got flange diameter. Flange thickness, that's all right. And then I'm going to go to suppression and put the flange in there. We may as well put the neck and the end chamfer in there too. But you can also organize this. So let's say that I wanted to open this with spreadsheet. So spreadsheet changes in here are going to affect this part. So let's look at how that looks. Could we copy our spreadsheet stuff under this spreadsheet? Hmm. Okay. So let's do this. We've got all these here. Let's say that I want to insert a dimension for my necks. We didn't really have different size necks anywhere, but we did have different size end chamfers. So I could select on this and insert a row. And then I could put the end chamfer one here. So how do we say that? End in chamfer. So this one's suppressed, right? This one's computed. And this one is 15 thousandths. Now, I want you to notice that it won't take a nil value. It won't take a blank space. So when we said that we were going to suppress things and we put that one in there, that means it's just not used. So I'm going to put a one in here. I'm going to save it. I'm going to get out of it. No, it won't take a zero because it thinks it needs to be there even though you're saying it's suppressed. So you couldn't create a feature that had zero dimension really besides those angles that went in there. Okay, you ready to add the next one? Insert row. What's this one? Diameter, 125. Length is the only thing that changes in these three, wasn't it? Stainless steel, 
187.25, I'm sorry, 25 thousandths. The flange is computed. The neck is computed. The end chamfer. Uh oh, look at that. Put in, this is an end chamfer, and this is an end underscore chamfer. How do we do those two? Which one is the parameter and which one is the feature? Parameter always has an underscore. All right, so let's say verify. It'll see if it can make. If it can't, it's going to highlight something in yellow. Uh-oh. What did I do? Yes. Yes. You can, uh, let me pull this down. You can take it into Excel and take it out. So, what is it? Is that right? It's coming from the top and not the bottom, so as the bottom gets longer, it's still staying in the same place, right? It's coming from the underside of the head. So you're saying this is 297? What do you guys have? Point three two five is what I got. Okay, so let's say okay, verify, cancel. Okay, you see how this was dimensioned from here? That neck? So I'm going to go back in here, and I'm going to flip this to the end of the part. Does that make sense? Or are we going to have to change this number? Uh-oh. Okay. Okay, we're going to do the cam bushing next. It's got 005 now. What's the diameter of the cam bushing? Cam bushing's on page 11. What is it? 0.218. What's the length? With the flange. 515. And this is false bronze. And we'll change that out there. What's the flange diameter? Flange thickness, one. Oh, flange diameter, so, oh, that's why these were one. <laughs> Suppress, and does it have a neck? So we're going to suppress this one. Does it have an end chamfer? Right? If it didn't have anything in there that was dropping down from anything else, you could put a 1 here, just so you know. And this one, we could put a 1. Not really. But when you have something up here, you just can't have a nil value. Alright? So is that all we need to change besides the material? Does it have anything else in it? Concentric coal. Okay. Con coal. <laughs> All right. So what we're going to do then is we're going to add that feature, and then we're going to add it to the table. So look at how you're going to add features, then add them to the table. All right. So I'm going to make a hole. It's concentric. Uh-oh. Thank you. Let's go back over here. All right. So what's the material? Foss bronze.
Just go up to bronze. Let's see if we can find something. How come it didn't do anything for me here? It didn't get it? Didn't click it right? There we go. Okay, so now we're going to have a concentric hole. And I'm going to grab this one. Doesn't matter which plane. And this is a concentric reference. And then the diameter of that hole 0.1562. Okay, and so I'm going to go to home. Do we have any different diameters of concentric holes? All right, so I'm going to put in conch hole equal. And say okay. So I'm going to call this conch hole without an underscore because those two would be exactly the same, right? Needs to understand that. Okay. What happened with that sketch that it got so angry? Whoa! Why did that go to one? I must have it in my spreadsheet that way. So let's go back here. We have to add a feature. Honk. Neck location is one, but the neck is suppressed. This is a parameter of size, and this is a computed or suppressed feature. Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to leave this here, even though it's suppressed. It's just giving me an error in my sketch, not in the feature. So it didn't create the, it didn't calculate the feature, but it changed my sketch. So I'm just going to put this back to what it was above there. Okay, so what else do we have here that we're going to add? Conch hole. So let's go back to what were we going to do? The parameters of that first. The diameter. And then we're going to go to the suppression. And then we're going to put this one in. Okay, now I'm going to go back through these and make sure everything's working right. Okay. See how that sketch is still doing that? Ah, oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So let's don't worry about this thing right here. It's suppressed. Um, now we're going to do the next one is what? What's that? Valve tap it. Valve tap it. So I'm going to go back here. Insert another one. Dash six. What's the diameter? Length overall. Point what? Yeah, point seven three. Why is that? Val is this a valve tap at bushing? I have 0.45 in length. I got 0.1 plus 0.35, is that right? Well, 
Let me pause this. This movie's getting real, like 30 minutes long. We're going to make a revolve hole, a rev hole here. We're going to hit R for revolve. We're going to make it a cut and say OK. And we're going to name this. OK. So I'm going to save this. And I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to put that feature in. So suppression. All these would be suppressed. So I didn't even have to highlight it. I'm just going over it and, and typing an S. It makes it a lot faster. Okay? That's right. If you're only computing, if this is the only one and you're just computing it or suppressing it and there are no different sizes, you don't have to bring the size parameters into the, into the thing, right? You're just going to compute or suppress. What is a material? High strength, low alloy. On that way down at the bottom. Okay, I'm going to save that. All right. So, what do we have next? Valve tap it bushing. Dash seven. What's the diameter? I'm sorry. Thanks. If you guys can yell these out to me, it'll make it, this a lot faster. What's the length? Point three six. Four five. Okay. And what about? Do we have a flange on that? What's the diameter? Thank you. The flange thickness. And it is computed. Do we have a neck? Do we have an end chamfer? On the valve tappet, we did have an end chamfer or no? Was that thirty thousandths as well? Okay. Uh huh. No chamfer. It has one at the beginning, so we're going to have to suppress the end one, right? At the end of the protrusion, not at the start of the protrusion. Uh huh. So that's why I called that one the end. Then we might have a start one. So does it have a start chamfer? The blanket notes. Okay, so it is an end chamfer. Okay, I'm sorry. And we left that 30 thousandths because of the blanket note. Right? Okay, do we have a concentric hole? What's the diameter? 0.25. And then what? A concentric hole? Computed? Revolve hole. Okay. So we don't. We do have this one. Okay. We had flattened diameter, and now I've got this huge countersink that's taking the whole part. What size is the countersink? 
It's what? 82 degrees by what's the diameter? And what's the hole diameter? Diameter at the face and the diameter of the pilot hole. Does that look right? Okay. And we're going to call this CSK hole. Save this. Go back into the table and add the countersink hole in suppression. And we're just going to compute that one, right? We don't have a lot of those kinds of holes in there. So, okay. I've got to go in here and change my material to drill rod or steel. High strength, low alloy, and it's right down the bottom. And then save it. Shall I do more? Okay, oil pump shaft. Dash nine. The diameter of the oil pump shaft is one twenty five. The length is one point one nine. The flange is suppressed. Okay, suppress. We don't have a neck. <laughs> Do we have an in chamfer? <laughs> okay. Concentric hole. Rev hole. Revolved hole. Countersink hole. We're going to have a perp hole. Did you get to, uh, at, you didn't, you didn't, oh man, all right. <laughs> Inside joke, sorry. Uh, we're going to change the material, is what, drill, drill rod? Okay, so we're good there. So now I'm just going to, how do we put, this hole goes all the way through, right? Can we make this hole go this way? Through all? Both ways? In our sketch? Let's create a sketch. And I'm going to put a point on here. So I've got to project geometry, my axis, and then the end of the part, which is that's where it starts. And I'm going to slice this and put a, let's see, project geometry of the axis. Okay, so I'm putting it right on the axis. If I have it projected already, it'll go ahead and get that constraint. And then I'm going to dimension it. Is it from this end or the other end, or does it matter? What's the location? Yes. The question was, why don't we put the tangent plane out here that's going to be parallel? So let's see if we can do this. Hole. What's the diameter? Okay. Can I go through all both ways? Through all? Well, if we're doing it from that middle sketching plane, we can't. So this is what he's saying. When we have a hole, we can't go both ways through all if we go from the middle plane. In this software only, okay? In other softwares you can. But 
If you make an extrusion, you can. So most of the time we're not going to make holes extrusions, are we? Okay. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the end part up before this hole. And I'm going to create a plane that's tangent to a surface parallel to another plane. So parallel to this plane, tangent to this plane. So let's see, if I resume this, is that hole going to be on that, good enough to be on that sketching plane? That's where we put the point, right? At least it wasn't 90 degrees out is what I'm saying. It's parallel. Okay, so this is, this is the way we do this. We can take the hole and take the sketch and redefine it to this plane. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I bet it's going the wrong way. So we're going to flip it. Goes all the way through all, and now we have that. So we can go in before if we realize that we need it and redefine the sketch to another plane. So let's go ahead and turn this off. And we're going to call this perp hole. Okay. Two seven two, is that what it was? Oh. Point oh three two from the end. Now this is the the distance from the end, not the diameter. Which they're both O32. Okay. Hmm. Look at that. Well, we need to make these two collinear because this was what it was measured from. So I have to project that geometry. Collinear means on the same line or the same trajectory. And now it looks like it's done, but now this has been lost. So it doesn't know where it is side to side. What can we do here? Can we line it up right with the middle? I can do this. Vertical alignment. Does that make sense? With the midpoint of that, that would be my axis. It says two dimensions are needed. You know what it needs? The length of this line. Poot. So I have to get rid of some of this stuff. So let's go ahead and project it correctly and make it coincident here. Coincident. And then put that 32 thousandths dimension on here. Good. Fully constrained. Woo! That looks better. Okay, so we got perp hole here to add. What's the, uh, that is also drill rod, so we're in good shape there. Let's go back to the table. Um, and I'm going to go to suppression, and I'm going to put perp hole in, and all these will be suppressed. So, okay. So now I'm going to save this. I'm going to take a break. I'm going to go back and make sure that I have suppressed everything that I need to. This is exactly how I'm going to check your parts. Looks good so far?